you a woman searching for purpose and success? A housewife? Maybe a single mother? You're in the right place. Welcome to Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Activate. Motivate. Inspire. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Savage Beast Empowerment Podcast. I am Miss Lisa Nobles, your hostess, and I am so excited and elated to have you joining with me today. Speaking of today, our topic consists of No Colored Nurses, A Self-Proclaimed Journey Through the World of Nursing by author Shaquista Gibbons. I have a very important guest joining me for this special empowerment segment at the Savage Speaks Roundtable. This segment is in sharing the experiences of being a nurse and from the perspective of a successful African-American nurse practitioner. So let's give a warm warm welcome to our guest queen, Shaquista Gibbons, who was born in Colleen, Texas. She has been in the nursing profession for almost 20 years. She currently lives in Dallas, Texas and with her husband as well as her children. She is an, an adult geriatric nurse, in which she will pronounce that more properly here in a minute, practitioner that is a board certified by American Academy of Nurse Practitioners. She can help patients from many different backgrounds and cultures and help them overcome health-related barriers. She is an author and small business owner. Welcome, Shadquiska, to the Savvy Speaks Roundtable. Family, our focus today, again, is No Colored Nurses, A Self-Proclaimed Journey Through the World of Nursing by author Shaquista Gibbons. So, Shaquista, welcome again, Queen. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. um, I believe you pretty much covered it all, other than the fact that um, the 20 was really 19 years. I've been nursing for 19 years. I started out as an LVN, and I worked my way up to nurse practitioner. Um, that's pretty much it for Sequisa Givens. I love that. I love that so much, family. And she has a lot to speak about today, and I'm excited to get into her story. So again, family, are you ready? Then let's talk about it. No Colored Nurses, which is a self-proclaimed journey through the world of nursing by author Shaquista Givens. All right, Queen, let's jump right in. So how long have you been in nursing? Let's kind of elaborate on that again, because you said you said in an earlier conversation that you're almost at 20 years, but then kind of right, share, I'm your, right, share your passion also for why you began nursing a career. Okay. Um, it's 19 going on 20 years. Right. I've been, I was an LVN for eight years. I had my social degree as an RN for five, bachelor's for three, and currently have my master's as an adult geriatric nurse practitioner for three years. I love um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. I've had a passion for nursing for as long as I can remember. It started out um, at the age of seven. My mother was um, involved in a motor vehicle accident, which left her paralyzed from the waist down with limited Mm -hmm. uh, use of her hands. Mm -hmm. So watching um, other nurses take care of her and taking care of her and trying to learn how and what they did is kind of what pushed me into the direction of nursing. And I've been in it ever since. Awesome. That's phenomenal. So you, we're going to discuss your book, but I want to kind of start out with this next question and kind of set the tone of the pace for your segment. What were some of the challenges and what are, what are some of the challenges presently in being a nurse? And then we're going to talk about your, your history and your book because it's an awesome book. Um, what are some of the challenges in being a nurse? Well, that's kind of double edged. Um, Mm -hmm. There are challenges to being a nurse, Mm -hmm. and then there are separate challenges to being an African-American nurse. Right. And the book is mostly focused on the challenges of being a a minority, basically, and the challenges that I had to to deal with. Because as far as the nursing part, I never really had an issue with that. Nursing school, never had an issue getting a first job, never an issue. It Mm -hmm. was always... I wasn't seen as a nurse. I was seen as the black nurse. And right. That's what really caused my challenges in the nursing world. Okay, awesome. So which leads me into our next topic is what inspired you to write your book? Kind of let's give a little background before we jump right into this because again, family, I really am encouraging you to go 
and and pick this book up, especially not just if you're a nurse, really. Um, I love the lessons that I've read so far. So um, kind of give us the background of what inspired you to write your book. What inspired me to write the book is that I am a member of several nursing groups on right. Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was noticing that a lot of the younger nurses were kind of giving up and they were saying um, things that happened to them and that they didn't feel like they were in the right profession and that they should find something else. And right. I really wanted to write my stories so they can see that they're not alone. This is not something that just happens to them. Right. And you can't it. You have to use that to move forward because right. the more education you have, the more you know about the policies and procedures of your facility, the less they can bully you. Right. Basically. I love that. I love that. So what is the premise behind the title of the book? The title of the book really came from another story on um, in the, the group. Where young one young lady was just really upset, and I had I private messaged her and talked to her about it later. But mm -hmm. she was really upset because she went to work, and this is 2018, right? And one of her patients told her to put gloves on because she was allergic to black people. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So that is where kind of why I decided to use the title of the book as that because in the very first story, I tell my first, not my only, but my first experience with a similar story to that. Okay, awesome. Which leads me into the book. And I and, and family, this is so exciting. Um, of No Colored Nurses is the name of Shaquise uh, Givens' book. Um, there's a part in the book, of course, right in the first chapter, and it talks about your experience. And let me just kind of recite. It says, I remember the first time I saw that sign. I had come to work with um, work to work my 12 hour shift, like always walking down the hall. I stopped dead in my tracks by a sign on a patient's door in all caps, no colored nurses. I could not believe my eyes. I ran back to the supervisor who was also black to tell her she stopped me. I already know. Now, let's kind of talk about that. And as you're sharing your story about in the group, and then I'll continue on, on what, um, what your supervisor said, but kind of tell us a little bit what was going on behind this particular instance in your life back in those times. Well, back then I was a fairly new nurse. This was mm -hmm. like my first job. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you can kind of feel the uneasiness Mm -hmm. um, with you being the nurse, but it was the first time I was ever just put directly in my face oh, okay. with no filter. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of dealing with the emotions of, wow, this is 1999 and this is what's happening to me today at work. Mm -hmm. I'm here to care for you. So that's kind of where I was as far as my emotions. Because when I saw the sign, I was like, nope, okay, fine. I won't, I won't take care of you. And my supervisor was like, no, that's not your nurse. You're supposed to take care of your patients regardless of how they feel. Right. You're here to take care of them. Right. So that was, yeah, she was very adamant about that. Right. <laughs> <Very> adamant. <laughs> and then it goes on to tell, but Becky, here is not, is, 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 here is not, and she is willing to take you as a patient. So your, your supervisor apparently went on to talk um, to the patient about mm -hmm. the significance of, okay, well, we have some one other here that's here that can serve you, but she's not a, she's not a nurse. So in essence, she's not qualified to take care of you, but because she is not of African-American descent, I would gladly, in essence, uh, of course, I'm paraphrasing, allow her to take yeah. care of you, but she wanted them to know that sh she's not a nurse. So if you prefer right. her to start your IV and monitor your vital signs and keep you alive, then you cannot have any <laughs> black nurses tonight. Tell us a little, kind of tell us, give us a little bit more about why that was so significant for you to include that in your book. I had to include that in my book because mm -hmm. that really right there was the background of how I became the nurse that I am. Right. That you can stand up for yourself without being rude, yes. without being, you know, loud. And she basically told them, hey, this is what you have to do. You don't really have a choice. Basically what she was saying to them. But there was never anything that they could have reported back to her for being, you know, disrespectful, unprofessional. So I kind of learned the art of 
saying what I say with a smile, but getting my point across mm-hmm, mm-hmm, by listening mm-hmm. at the door. Because I thought she was going to go and then go off. So when she didn't, I was surprised. And I was like, whoa, here's this powerful black charge nurse letting them know how it is. But she never once was not professional. Mm-hmm. So I kind of use that. You'll notice that that's the way I am from now on in the rest of the book. Right. I'm kind of, mm-hmm. I say what I say, but it's professional. Mm-hmm. And you get my point without any, you know, misunderstandings. Right. I love that. And then because of your example, which we kind of talked about offline, which we'll, you know, refer back to here in a little bit again, the next day, or uh, I don't know if it was exactly the next day, but um, within a short, a short, very amount of time, because of your presence and the way you did carry yourself and the way you were allowed to take care of this same particular per- uh patient when you came back the next day the note read she marked out no and she left colored nurses kind of give us a little bit more uh about your journey it actually that read that. only colored nurses mm-hmm, um that mm-hmm. same supervisor and her partner who left me a review on um, Amazon. They thought it was hilarious because they knew exactly who they were Mm -hmm. and (laughs) they discussed the book together. They trained me. And when they trained me, they were so hard on me. They monitored everything I did. They followed behind me. And I asked them in the book, you you know, it goes into more detail why. And they let me know that as a black nurse, you have to be better because you will be watched closer. So I'm training you to be that way. So when I got that patient, there was not one question they had that I didn't have an answer to. There was nothing that they tried to throw at me that I couldn't answer because of the way they had trained me already. So Mm -hmm. that gave them the excellent care that they provided to let them know, hey, I think I had it wrong the whole time. I got the wrong group of people taking care of me. Right. Mm -hmm. I love that. And now moving on until until, uh, to your next chapter that I really could appreciate what you were saying, which is kind of where you're alluding to not fair. You say um, in the book, it reads, I also respected them both because as black women in power, they never had a better than you attitude. They never chose not to help me just because I was another black nurse. They taught me that you don't have to put down another black nurse to get to head, get ahead. Kind of expound upon that point there for me, Shaquise. Uh, I think I didn't realize at that moment the importance of that until I got other jobs and I realized that that's not how it was everywhere. Because like I said, this was one of my first jobs. They were the first ones to take me under their wings and kind of show me the ropes. But when I ventured out into something else, Else, I ran into other issues, which are in the book of other people and how they tried to throw me under the bus, you know, the lack of better way of saying that. So it made me appreciate them more because even though they were, you know, the top people at the hospital, as far as nurses go, it was never a, a situation where I felt belittled. Even when they corrected me, they corrected me in the way that made it open to where I was, I felt okay to go and talk to them about it. It was never like, you know, sometimes when you have a supervisor that will tell you about something and they make you feel so bad and so stupid, by the way, they tell you that you don't really approach them anymore. It was never like that with them. They always was professional. They always made me feel like I could come to them. They always taught me stuff. If I had an issue with anything, they were always right there to support me and to help me. So I, that's what I meant by that's where my respect for them comes from. Right. Okay, Shaquisa, as we continue in your journey of your book, I'm really um, excited to continue exploring what you were thinking, because I think that um, you have a lot of great points. So you, in essence, you were able to carry what you learned from your foundation is the point that I wanted to make to other people, that even though that anytime you start anything that a found if you have a good foundation, it helps you to get to where you need to be. And some of the things that you expounded upon was that it was no throwing it under the bus. Y'all were a team. They taught you how to speak to it. They taught you how to um to 
just conduct yourself, especially as an African American nurse. It taught me how to deal, interact with other nurses. It taught me how to interact with people who would only see me as a black nurse and not a nurse or a person. It taught me basically, like you said, the foundation of the type of nurse that I want to be. I think what a lot of nurses don't understand is who you are as a nurse represents more than really who you are as a person because the person you are as a nurse has other people's lives in your hands so if they can't trust you and you're not a moral you know if you're not like you're supposed to be morally i can say then how can they trust put their lives in your hand so they kind of they walk the walk they talk the talk and that's kind of where i got that from if i say something i mean it if i make a mistake i'm going to admit to it so that all came from the training that I got from them. I love that. And then you also go on in that chapter to speak about how that being the best can still only go so far. And that was one of the lessons yes. that you learned. And and I yes. love that. Um, that's why I said this book is kind of a holistic approach to other women, African-American descent, that, you know, you can go through the trials and tribulations, but you can still come out on top. But yet, you know, you still have to walk the walk and talk the talk, as you were saying. Now, when we get into more of your book, um, I really particularly love the part where um, you, in your teamwork section, um, I, do you think that in society that not just, well, nursing, of course, in general, that you find that, have you found that there wasn't a lot of teamwork? Absolutely. But you have to remember, nursing is the only thing I've ever done. Right. So mm -hmm. as far as the other jobs, I really can't, you know, speak for it. But I know as far as this job, it's very difficult uh, physically on your body. It's very difficult emotionally. So if you don't have somebody there to, you know, hold you up when things get tough, you're going to crumble. You're going to feel like, you know, that this is a job you can't handle. As long as you've got one, at least one other person there to help you when you are drowning because those days do come then you'll realize that you can get through it but you have to ha you have to have another person and that's what makes it so hard when you get to a job and, and everybody's only out for themselves and that's why a lot of those people don't stay in those jobs because they don't have a partner basically mm -hmm. awesome now and you were talking about that in your book you said nights were hard but when you work with people that don't mind helping you because they know you will help them too makes things a lot easier kind of expound on that part of teamwork and and why that was so important for you to include that in your book. that that was important to me in my book because when i first came tonight it was a every man for itself thing right it really was and it was tough and it was difficult so i took it upon myself to start helping other people and then those people started helping me and then the nights became fun. I mean, we got our work done, right. we played games, we joked, we laughed. And so it became a thing of the floor for everybody to help each other because when it was your turn to need help, you had all these people that were willing because you just helped them. Right. So it was really funny when we got someone new on the floor who hadn't been there long enough, didn't understand the importance of teamwork because we were always helping her. Like we helped everybody else and just took one night of her seeing what it would be like without the help for her to trans, you know, change her mind about, okay, yeah, teamwork is needed. So that was, I, I'd laugh at this story to the day when I see her on Facebook. <laughs> I love that. Now, and then also when you get into your good nurse, bad nurse description of the chapters, you kind of talk about, you said, I could not work with a nurse that was not willing to train me, but was sneaky and willing to try and ruin my career. Kind of talk right. about that a little bit because I think that that's relevant when we're talking about teamwork. And, you know, kind of how we discuss that standard that you hold that I've seen throughout your book. I love the standard that you hold for yourself. So kind of talk about the premise behind that. Okay. So we all know that everybody doesn't want to help you. And that's fine. If you don't want to help me figure out how to do this, I have no problem with that. I can find someone else or I can, you know, learn it on my own. But when you maliciously set me up to take a fall, then I can't, I can't work with you because I can't trust you. At that time, it was my first nursing home job. And she basically told me what to do and then reported me for doing the wrong thing. 
Like, how can you work with somebody like that? Because the next thing she does, it could hurt, harm somebody, or it could have cost me my license. Because as a nurse, your license is on the line every single day you go to work. Every single day you go to work. If you make a mistake big enough to harm somebody, the state of Texas can come and take your license. So you right. have to be careful, you know, in who trains you and who you trust. So when they told me, oh, no, you go back to the floor with her, I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> have you, I, I wanted to ask her, have you, have you been drinking today? Because that was not an option. Mm -hmm. I mean, she already had no reason to set me up. But now that she got rolled up in place of me, I knew that she was going to try to do something. So I knew that was a, a, a no-brainer. I couldn't stay there. I, now, and then the next lesson, because you have a lot and abundance of lessons, one of the next lessons that you, you talk about are at the ending of the story of the next chapter, you discuss about how you did come into contact with someone who was willing to train you and invest and help you to be your best even further. And then in your book, it, it reads, uh, she said, well, when your time comes, and it will, do not treat the newbie like they did you be the nurse that yes. you wanted them uh, that you wanted when you needed guidance. And then you said the real nursing school starts after you graduate. And when it's your turn to teach, be the teacher you wanted to have. I love that. Kind of expound upon that. It's really um, the same thing. Like when you first get into nursing that first year or two, you really don't have no idea of what you're doing because school prepares you for the test. It doesn't prepare you for real life of nursing. And I think that's where a lot of nurses don't understand. They think when they get out of school and pass the test, they know everything they need to know. School did not teach you how to write orders. It didn't teach you how to manage your time. It didn't teach you how to fill out the paperwork. There's so many things you have to learn after you get out of school. So you want to find someone that's going to help you get through that. And then once you get steady on your feet, you need to help the next person. And what makes me upset a lot of time is a lot of these nurses that don't help new nurses forgot that they were like that one day. So they either struggled until they got it or somebody talked to them. So why would you want someone else to have such a difficult start when you yourself know what it's like? You should want to help them because of the way you had to go through it. I love so, that. And that's what I do every time I teach somebody new and I help them. I tell them the same thing she told me. When you become the expert and a new nurse, which we call novice, comes into the business, you remember that I helped you and you help her. Just keep it going. And that and it makes your work, your life easier. If the nurse she works with have the same knowledge that you have, then if you need a backup, you know you can trust that person because you've trained them. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, another point that I really loved about in your book that I feel that was important for um, your the audience to kind of really take a look at is when you talk about another journey that you went through later on in your nursing profession and Dr. Farmer and, and, and kind of like that difficulty I could read how you know it was kind of like a some type of power struggle and he kind of made this assumption um, apparently about you without giving you the opportunity to prove your skill set or prove who you were so you had a little challenge so you said he gave you this look that introduced um, that I introduced myself was a shock of shock and disgust I can so relate to that when you're beginning something new and you're really striving to just do the right thing. Just simply, you're just doing the right thing, trying to weed out all the bad and trying to expound upon the good. Tell me how that made you feel and why is that relevant for the, the next nurse or the audience to understand when that happened, this is how pro, you can approach that pro, in a proactive manner. Well, when it happened to me, I'm just going to be honest, I was hurt. My feelings was hurt and I was Thank disappointed mm -hmm. because before I met him, we had an excellent relationship because mm -hmm. none of the other nurses wanted to do the charge nurse job, which I was doing without the pay, which means right, I was the one right. that was calling mm -hmm. him, paging him, mm -hmm. and pretty much running the floor and he never had an issue with me. I had been doing it for months. Because I wanted to make sure that I was good at it and I liked it before I went to them and, you know, asked for the pay. And I also wanted to have the background of saying, hey, I've been doing it for two months. If they tried to say I wasn't qualified. So that's the reason why I let it go on for so long without pay. 
because sometimes when you're coming into something new, you have to prove that you can do it before they'll give you a chance. Right. Now, so mm -hmm. when he, no, go ahead. I, I won't forget. Okay. So when he, um, dismissed me and said that I was not qualified, the only retaliation that I could have at that time was to stop doing the job. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now that the person that used to sit in the office and not have to come out, now she's got to come out for everything now because I'm not doing it. So that was kind of like my retaliation. You did not back me because you know that I can do the job. Since you didn't back me, so I'm going to let you do it because I don't get right. No, I, get I really it. didn't have to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when she came to me and questioned me, like, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? I just looked at her because she knew why, basically. And I was like, well, I'm not getting paid for it for one. For number two, I don't get the perks of it. So, and the doctor said that I'm not qualified. She right. had no grounds to say anything. Like she couldn't write me up or anything because I was in the right. That's where I say knowing the policy and procedures, knowing the rules right. is always, you know, the best for you to make sure that you do what you're supposed to do. No, and I love that because, and I, I highlighted that part also, I believe it was at the end of your chapter, because I, and, and another thing that I love about her book, at the end of each chapter, she leaves a, a little nugget of learning. And I love that. The lesson learned is, is how she puts it. And I love that because it kind of gives you a brief synopsis of the story she just told and the direction that you should potentially go without damaging yourself, but how to be a stronger leader in the nursing profession in particular. So you also talked about in that instance, you had a mixture of hate and, and hurt. And I love that vulnerability because my guests and I often talk about that a lot of us are not vulnerable when we're telling our story. We want to make it look so rosy and pretty, pretty, but success is not always rosy and pretty. But the, another lesson you said was you stood up for you. I now I love that. Now kind of talk about that a little bit as we lead into the last segment. Why was it so important for you to mention in the book, even though you were angry, you you stood up for you and and that's that's just what it was about. I think that's very important as an African American nurse because okay. I can't tell you how many times I have seen nurses take the fall for what I don't think was their fault. Okay. Um for mm -hmm. example, I used to work as an agency nurse and this nurse signed a medication error. Right. Didn't uh -huh. read it. Read just that. brought it to her and said, Hey, here you go, sign it. And she signed No, this was something different. Oh, okay. Mm hmm Not yeah, not the one in the story for me. Right. This was a different a nurse. Okay. And I was just looking at and I asked her, I said, You didn't read that? And she was like, No, they said I made a medication error. Well, how do you know that's your medication error if you didn't read right. it? I mean she just signed it. So she asked for it back and guess what? That right. was not even her patient. Wow. Wow. Not even her patient. Wow. I, 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 I can appreciate what you're saying about that because of the simple fact a lot of us and even in just even in any profession, I guess, you know, we all think that when our supervisors give us something that this is, you know, it's our fault. It's been thoroughly investigated. But one of the intricate elements of her book is about standing up for yourself and making sure you do the research. There's not a part of your story that I haven't seen where you did not go back and cover yourself or just to make sure, except, um, you know, another piece of the story that I want to go, if we have time, we can go into a little bit later, but I love that because you also talk about they did not last long because word has spread that I was removed from another floor for lack of knowledge. Now, how did that, how did that make you feel when you knew that you were very knowledgeable you knew what you were talking about but because of it sounds like to me that it was a little bit of prejudice why how did how did you supersede in that in that area with this same story of dr farmer i don't think it was a little bit of prejudice i think it was a lot okay because i want to think everybody that. yeah everybody that knows i mean in nursing you uh -huh. know who knows and you know who don't Mm -hmm. So if you work with somebody for a little while, you know if they're knowledgeable or not, by the way they talk, by the way they act, how they handle themselves. So if I'm working on this floor and I'm not having any problems with you ever, then you should know, hey, something's not right. right. For you to still act like I don't know what I'm talking about, even though you're coming to me and I'm helping you do your stuff. <laughs> so I was very upset. I was very hurt and I was very angry. Right. Because I was like, I know that you guys know 
that that was not the truth. I know that you guys know the story because it's a hospital. You see Grey's Anatomy. Everything that happens goes around so everybody knows what really happens. There's no, oh, a secret, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, they knew what really happens. So mm-hmm. I, that's why I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. I have to come up here for 12 hours, three or four times a week. I was turning into an angry person. Right. A bitter person. I was losing my professionalism. I was saying things I shouldn't say, so I knew it was time for me to go. I I, I get that, I, and I and I appreciate that. Now let's kind of take a real quick turn before we end our segment. When we I I like your chapter of Speaker of the House, and you talk about that. I have found that I had a real love for educating parents. A direct approach was appreciated by most because it came from a pay, place of caring. How important is it from a nursing perspective to come from a place of caring? And and then you also expound upon how you had a love for educating patients. If you if it doesn't come from a place of caring, it won't work. Because mm-hmm. if it's just about the money, um, I do home health now and I have right. home health nurses and we had this debate on the Facebook page the other day. There are some that take vital signs and leave. And then you have some that will stay an extra 15 minutes to 20 minutes to make sure that the patient understands what they're teaching. That's where the love of caring and the love of your patients come from. You're not going to leave the patient in distress. I've had nurses chart a blood sugar of 400 and left the home without doing anything. A patient, a nurse, I mean, sorry, a nurse that's not there for the paycheck would never do that. The patient mm-hmm. is in harm's way. She's going to make sure she gets that blood sugar down. She's going to make sure she calls someone. She's going to make sure the family is aware. Like there, you can tell the difference between the ones that are in, in it for the money or the ones that's right. in it because, you know, their love of the patient. And you're supposed to have, you can have both. You can be in it to make a good career for yourself, you know, make a nice living and care for your patients. But if you're just in it for the money, you show yourself whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can appreciate that. Even in any situation, um, any circumstance, I love that theology. I think that we all have to be responsible and accountable for for our own decisions and what we're doing. But what I like about the ending of this chapter, the lesson learned, as I discussed earlier, was that never trust anyone until they prove they are trustworthy. Well, actually, that was from that chapter, but there's so many stories that I didn't put in the book. Right, but this is knowledge. I love it. Right. The The reason why that is one of my lessons learned is because there have been nurses that I have tried to help. And one in particular that I'm thinking of right now made a mistake. And instead of me, you know, reporting her, I told her so she could not make that mistake and fix it later. So she went to the supervisor and reported me for bullying her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got called into the office for trying to help her. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, from now on, I'm going to kind of help. And whoever, you know, reaches out to me or like, oh, okay, open. Then those are the ones that I'll help. I'll offer it to everybody, but I'm not going to be as open to get mm-hmm. myself into trouble. And that's kind of the the way I've done things. You know, I've, nurses nowadays, when I go and see their patients as a nurse practitioner, if I see something, I'll text them about it. And then I'll also, you know, follow up with a text like, I hope I didn't offend you. I just right. thought, you know, right. this is some information. And then there are some that will get an attitude. And then there are some that say, oh, no, I just started. I need all the help I can get. Right. That's right. the number I save in my phone. And that's the number I say, if you need any help, let me know. Right. And you and, and you also tell a, a story of kind of what alluded to that lesson, of course. And, you, and in here, I did mark that you said these nurses had set me up. So how... How did that feel? Like, what was that like? And especially like how you share your knowledge about being in the uh, in the other nursing groups, uh, like for on Facebook, for example, and you're going through and you're strolling through and just based on your experiences, you can kind of relate to some of the nurses and like you, you are very passionate seemingly to young nurses, to the newer nurses, because you want them to kind of not have to go through what you went through. So how did that make you feel when you discovered that a team that you were on really had set you up and you thought that you were helping, but it really wasn't being perceived in that way? You mean in the story, Speaker of the House? Yes, in Speaker of the House. Yes. Um, the same story. In that story, I didn't really feel um, 
I, I was upset by the way they did me, but right. it didn't hurt as bad as it right. would have if it hadn't been um, African American nurses. I was the only one there. Right. I was right. the only African American nurse in the office. So that when it happened, it really wasn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. It just proved to me that I was on my own, basically. Right. Right. So how did that make you feel being on your own? Because remember, when you first started your job as a nurse, you were taught about teamwork. You were taught about, you know, st setting these standards and trying to, you know, work together to make the environment better. Because, of course, your passion are, is your patience. So how did that feel when you encountered that later on in your career? Yeah, and this was later on in my career. And mm -hmm. it was also when I was no longer doing actual labor, like I right. did as an mm -hmm. LBN. And this is why I try to tell everybody to go back to school. Because the higher up you get, the more independent you can be. Okay. So in the mm -hmm. office setting, I didn't need any help. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Right. They were asking me for help, basically. Right. But so as far as being individualized in the office, I was fine with it because that's really what I preferred anyway. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but it was, <laughs> now it was like, when you tell me something, I have to make sure that I get the facts behind that. I'm not going to take it and run with it. Everything you say to me, I have to fact check before I, you know, take it to be true. Right. So what advice would you give a new nurse? Oh, man, there's so much advice. I'm actually doing a podcast for nursing students and um, new nurses that I'm trying to get up and going within the next month or so. But I would say the most important thing would be to find a mentor, someone mm -hmm. that is willing to help you, someone that is open. And you can't just anybody that offers you help. You still have to kind of keep your eye open and make sure that the person you pick is someone you want to be like in your career. Right. Okay, Shaquisa, thank you so much for being, um, all the information that you've given today. You shared a lot of tips, and I am so appreciative, and I know that the audience is going to be appreciative, or they are appreciative of the knowledge that you shared from your book and just your experiences. So what advice would you give to others who are wanting to get into the nursing profession or expand their professional horizon by taking their nursing career field to the next level? What would be your final thoughts and you have about one to two minutes to kind of really talk to that that one person who is passionate but maybe they're sitting on the fence or that one person who is going through some of the same challenges or experiences what would you tell them i think the advice i would have is to continue um, educating yourself Mm -hmm. on any and everything if you are a um, lvn and you've decided that this is all you don't, you don't want to go any further you still need to be taking classes you still need to be you know staying up to date because that is going to help you further your career if you have decided to go back to school that is great i i think that that is the best thing you can actually do for yourself is to keep getting your education but you know sometimes life gets in the way and we're not able to but you still need to be educated and i think the most important thing besides nursing is the policy and procedures of your facility because i have seen so many nurses almost get fired for things that they've done and then they pull out the policies and procedures book with a little you know someone telling them to right and it's in the policy and procedures book. You can't fire me if I'm doing what you legally say that I'm supposed to do. Right. Right. You have to know. And you have to know your surroundings, too. You have to know who um, who the people you work with are people that you can vent to safely without, getting, without it getting back. You have to know what people you can trust as far as helping you with things, people that you can ask questions to. You need to know the people that you shouldn't talk to, people you shouldn't get advice from, and the ones you shouldn't talk to. For your you know your job safety because you never want to trust someone that you shouldn't trust and you know something Shaquisa I want to just add one more thing that I found that was really astronomical to your book that I really love because I wrote in big letters amen and you said I did not want to work for a manager that would fire me without finding out what really happened Yes. I think that's important. And then you said, and then when he found out that I was innocent, refused to apologize. Because you, you kind of talked about people know, everybody know, but there's always two perspectives. There's always two perspectives. To end on this, because I think this is important, end on why is that so significant and why you added that to your book. I added that to my book because of the fact that this is 
my career. Mm -hmm. Um, as a nurse, if you get, you can get, especially as an agency nurse at that time that I worked, mm -hmm. if it gets out that, you know, I'm hard to work with or I did something right. like that, I could basically not get another job. Come on. Mm -hmm. So for you to fire or not fire me, DNR, do not return me for something that was said and you had no proof of who said it. Like if the lady who said it had not have gone to the office, nobody would have believed me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love and that. And I've never in my life heard of firing somebody based on something that somebody said. Who gets right. fired from their job for saying something? I, but you know that goes to defamation, and there goes there's a lot of it different facets to because we all we all have our own experiences. We all work through our own eyeglasses, and that's why we have to keep those glasses clean and clean at all possible opportunities because there's misunderstandings and you said my father always told me that your reputation will arrive at the meeting 20 minutes before you do so always take responsibilities for your action with a lesson learned and i'm going to end that comment this show on that but if you have any further thoughts on if you want to expound quickly on what your father said, I would really appreciate that because I thought that that was awesome. What was the premise or behind your father teaching you that lesson? There was an incident. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm going to need y'all off my business <laughs> where I lied about something. And my father knew that I lied. Uh -huh. And he just let me know for a while. He didn't believe anything that I said, even though he knew it was true. He wanted to instill in me that once you're a liar and people think you're a liar, there's nothing you can do to fix that reputation. Mm -hmm. And so after those months or so of him treating me like I was a criminal, not really, but you know, you must have lied because you're a liar, that type of, you know, training in me. That's when he said that to me. If you are not 100% true about what you do and people catch you in the lie, if they can't trust you, that trust you can't get back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, if I had have said that, I would have told them I said it. And there's been situations where I have gotten in trouble in the nursing world because I have admitted to something that was an error that nobody wanted to claim. And then when it came down to it and I signed up with me, I said, oh, I'm sorry, I did that. And people were shocked. Mm -hmm. You cannot be ashamed. Cause, and the fact that I admitted to it, guess what? The doctor, it was an order. I think I gave like 12 units of insulin instead of uh, 15. Because I admitted to it, the doctor fixed the order to where it was what I gave. So I wouldn't mm -hmm. get wrote up for it because I was honest. Mm -hmm. I you have to be honest in this world. You have to be, you know, accountable for your actions or because nursing is not like another job. You have people's lives in your hands. Right. If you're not honest about the mistakes you made and the things you do, it can possibly cost you your career. There, we get a newsletter of all these nurses that have lost their license and it, it gets longer and longer every year. And mm -hmm. so I would tell everyone, never do any, never chart anything you didn't do. And every time you're in a patient's room, act like there's a family member or a recording device watching you and mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. And I thank you for sharing those tips and sharing your story with our audience today. I think you did such a phenomenal job. Thank you so much. And I am elated to have participated in this show today. I know that someone somewhere was touched by this wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much to the guest queen of the round table, Shaquisa Givens, CEO of Building Better Tomorrows, who you can find out more about her at www.iamlisanobles.com slash podcast.html as a bonus please visit www.iamlisanobles.com slash resources.html i told you guys today is a day that i am really off kilter but thank you for your patience i love you for being here where you can receive free po podcast resources for being a part of the savvy speaks podcast family i love you i truly do and thank you for being a part of the show and remember my madra and my and, and as I always say, you are you are a unique combination of experiences, clothes and purpose, strength and destiny. Have a great week. I will see you right here next time on the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Bye bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles online at imlisanobles.com and on Facebook and Instagram at EWOFP. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review and we'll catch you next time on Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Activate, motivate, inspire.